Many pilots enjoy flying at night. The air is typically more smooth or still because we don't have the afternoon sun heating the earth unevenly, creating all the turbulence. Um, usually ATC is much quieter, there's less traffic at night. But there's still emergencies that can occur at night that we need to uh, consider. So the first thing we want to discuss is engine failure. So if you're in a single engine airplane and you have an engine failure at night, we still want to go through the same technique as far as trim for your best glide speed to conserve your altitude, uh, choose a landing site and aim for it, troubleshoot if you can't restart the engine, call for help, and then lastly if you have time, secure the aircraft. But the thing we want to discuss here is what type of landing site might we choose for an engine out situation at night. Well, it's kind of open for discussion. Some people believe that you should aim for a uh, dark or dimly lit area, hoping that it's a field or a pasture of some sort. Other people believe that you should aim for a more lit area so help will arrive sooner. I usually encourage my students to try to pick a place that's maybe, maybe dark, but close to a population. Now there's also a discussion of using roads. Um, I typically discourage students from choosing a road during the daytime because there's a lot of traffic as well as power lines go across the road and uh, with the traffic we don't want to be in a car accident and an airplane accident in the same day so we try to avoid using the roads but at night it might be a slightly different story. If you see a large interstate which are very easy to see at night typically there's less traffic and um, power lines don't usually go across an interstate. We do have a lot of overpasses, you have bridge overpasses, so you still have to be concerned about that. But you know your options are a bit limited at night. So that's open for discussion. Okay, the next thing is, what if we have an electric failure at night? With electric failure, hopefully, um, as a good pilot, you're constantly checking you know, every 10 or 15 minutes, including in your scan, your, your engine gauges and electrical instruments. So hopefully you notice if your voltmeter or ammeter shows a discharge, then you can land at the nearest airport. But let's say, for example, that you didn't happen to notice it and you end up with a complete electric failure. Well, think about all of the things in your aircraft that work electrically, possibly your flaps, um, your fuel gauges, uh, your interior lighting, your, your um, communication and navigation radios. So there's many things in your aircraft that aren't gonna work. And examiners on your check ride love to ask, well, would the engine quit if we had an electric failure? And remember in a previous video, we discussed, no, your engine won't quit because it doesn't work off of the alternator and battery system. But your other items that we discussed are not gonna work. So um, what airport would you choose to land at in this situation? You want to find an airport that has an L by itself. Remember that the L with the asterisk is pilot control lighting. And remember to turn your lights on at night, it would require seven clicks and five seconds on your push to talk to turn the, the airport lights on bright, and then five times to turn the lights to medium, and three times to turn it to a low intensity if that airport happens to offer those options. But anyways, um, without an electrical system, uh, that's not going to work anyway, so you're going to have to find on your sectional chart an airport that has an L by itself. Now perhaps um, you don't see one or maybe you found one but it's too far away. Um, you might get lucky and a previous aircraft happened to have landed um, at an airport and the lights are still on from them turning them on. But when you use pilot control lighting, the airport lights stay on only for a period of time, so I'm not quite sure if it's standard 15 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever, but I do know that they stay on for a period of time and then they will turn back off. So if you were counting on using an airport that somebody else had turned the lights on, um, hopefully they stay on by the time you land, but you're kind of taking your chance. Okay. The other thing you could do is if you uh, have a cell phone with you, you could always look up like a ATC frequency um, and just call them and tell them on the cell phone that uh, you have no electrics and can you come in and land at their airport and then um, look for the light gun signals if they give you the approval. Um, so that could be another option. Okay, another thing we want to discuss is cloud entrance. So at night, um, if there's only a few clouds, maybe just a couple little cumulus clouds left over from the afternoon um, and there's a bright moon, you can usually see those type of clouds. 
but sometimes if it's an overcast layer it's really really difficult to see the cloud layer and perhaps you just took off and you're climbing up and you entered into the clouds well then just ca stay calm and descend back down a little bit of your altitude or lose a little bit of your altitude to come back out of the bases or maybe you're in route and maybe you're flying along at 5,500 on a cross-country flight or something and you accidentally enter the clouds so sometimes people don't even realize they're in the clouds at one moment you can see the ground lights you know you can see people's house lights or street lamps or interstates or whatnot and then suddenly you don't see anything well if your strobe lights are on you definitely would notice that you're in the clouds because the flickering is nearly blinding in some aircraft um, so that would definitely alert you that you entered the clouds um, or of course you can no longer see the ground then you know you're in the clouds in that case um, you're going to use your training that you received earlier and uh, you're going to calmly make a 180 degree turn and fly back to where you just came from because obviously there were no clouds back there so just keep your cool and do a 180 degree turn and get back out now let's say for example you're really in the clouds and you're very scared you're not even sure that you can do a 180 degree turn you can always key up and ask ATC for any pilot reports or if they have any information and they can happily give you any headings or altitudes to help you exit the clouds that you should not have been in. Uh, fog formation. So during the daytime, uh, typically the temperature dew point spread is a little farther apart than um, in the, the evening hours. So once the sun sets, let's say in our example, the temperature during the day was 10 degrees Celsius and the dew point, I'm sorry, the temperature was 18 degrees Celsius and the dew point was 10 degrees Celsius and now the sun goes down so the earth is going to start cooling uh, fairly quickly so maybe the temperature drops to 15 and then 13 and then 11 and then now as soon as it gets close or right at the dew point temperature um, then fog is going to form so especially uh, like in the in the early evenings in the winter time particularly fog can form very very quickly so uh, pay attention to the temperature dew point spread and let's say that you're already airborne and you're flying along and you look down and you notice that now the street lights or the the traffic on the interstate um, the lights are starting to be, look a bit fuzzy um, that's typically when fog is starting to form so um, just be, a vig be vigilant to the temperature dew point spread and uh, always know where a uh, point of safety could be to fly to so for example um, maybe you're flying to the coastline and the coastline uh, often can fog over very quickly so maybe your safety net would be to fly away from the coast and have an alternate airport in mind or perhaps in the mountainous area fog can also form very quickly and if you're making you're planning on flying into the uh, mountainous area then obviously have another alternate airport in mind to fly to uh, somewhere where it wouldn't be foggy all right, the next uh, thing we want to discuss would be wildlife. And what we're talking about um, would be animals on the runway, on or near the runway, that uh, have caused many, many accidents. So some birds are nocturnal, such as uh, large owls, um, a deer, a fox, uh, different uh, raccoons, bears even. Any animals that are more nocturnal can create uh, dangerous situations for aviation. So what you want to do is when you're going to take off, you want to scan down the runway as you normally do, but also be very aware in your peripheral for any kind of movement or possibly your landing light uh, shines and the animal's eyes usually reflect that. So just be very aware on your takeoff. Always be ready to abort your takeoff um, very quickly at night in case an animal decides to run across your path. Uh, when you come in for landing also, be careful and be vigilant to scan down the runway as well as the side of the runway being always ready to go around in case an animal you know, darts across the runway in front of you. Okay? And then the next thing we want to discuss is um, what happens if you land at night without a landing light? Well keep in mind a landing light isn't even required unless the aircraft is for hire. So you're certainly safe to land without a landing light. Most people like having their landing light and having it on. But one problem that the landing light can cause um, if you're not trained properly is 
When you're coming in to land, your landing light shining out the runway is the brightest thing, so that typically draws your vision to that, that landing spot. But as you're coming in on your landing, you want to make sure and remind yourself to transition your vision from your aiming point all the way down the runway to get a good perception of when it's time to round out and flare for your landing. Okay. So what happens if your landing light's not working? Well, you can still easily see the runway edge lights, which are white, and you can easily see as you're coming down closer and closer that the lights are going to show up in your peripheral and you're still going to um, focus your vision all the way down the runway and you should be able to land safely uh, without having your landing light on.